Napakabuti ng Diyos. I've been gone for two weeks and I missed celebrating with you guys. Really, it's uh, something that you look forward to every Sunday. You come here, you know, to celebrate with the children of God. You know, especially tayo, magkakakilala tayo, Filipinos. And it's just different. Even, you know, you go outside, you go to different churches. Even here in the Philippines, you go to different churches. You know, this is still different, you know. This is still different. I hope you feel the same way. Do you? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, allow me to go to the Word today directly. Um, as we have been, I've been, we are being led by the Spirit of God. And have you ever been in a situation where you, you, you come into the room you stand in the middle and then all of a sudden nakalimutan mo kung ano yung gagawin mo. Of course, doon sa may mga edad, natural na yun, di ba? Like me, I'm usually, you know, I stand up, look at, look at the table, hinahanap ko, asan ba itong salamin ko na to? Di ba? And then you find out yung salamin mo nandito nakasabit. Di ba? Hanap ka ng hanap doon sa lamesa. Ano po yan? And most of the times, when we are so, when, when, when we are so uh, pressured, masyado tayong maraming iniisip, maraming problemang dumarating sa atin, you know, we, we come to that point wherein we try to look for some things. Na, naandun tayo because we have to get something. Di ba? Pero pagdating doon, we, we, we tend to forget. Nakakalimutan natin kung bakit tayo nandun. Why are we here? What are we doing here? You know? And today, that would be the title of our sermon this morning. What are you doing here? Allow me to, to, tell, me, to tell you this story. Last Friday, I joined the men's convention sa Camp Benjamin. And uh, we had a good time. I know uh, yung ating mga kalalakian doon, they really had a good time. They stayed up to yesterday, you know, and they celebrated. <coughs> but there was this one story that uh, just stuck with me. Um, it was Pastor Edgy um, ang nagkikwento po. No? It was, uh, there was a, the story of a, of a mother and a, and a son. Kusan, I hope, Doon sa mga nakapunta, doon sa nakapunta. I hope I remember it right, but this is basically how I remembered it. The, the mother was just uh, waking up. Yung kanyang anak, kinigising niya. Uy, anak, gising na, dalihan mo. Ano ba? Hindi ka ba babangon? So, finally, bumangon yung anak. After how many times uh, the, the mother was bugging him <laughs> Sabi, ano ba, Nay? Bakit ba tayo kailangan bumangon? Ano ba? Sabi nung nanay, unang-una, Sunday ngayon. We have to go to church. Pangalawa, sabi niya, anak, born again Christian tayo. Kailangan, nasa simbahan na tayo by now. And then yung pangatlo, ang pinakamabigat, sabi niya, anak, Ikaw ang pastor ng 8 o'clock, kaya kailangan bumangon ka na. Alas 7.30 na. <laughs> diba? And it's true. Diba? Sometimes, we, we just do things na hindi natin naaalala. And, you know, we, we are so lost at times and marami tayong questions. We, we, we ask ourselves, what are we doing really here? Ano ba talaga tayo dito? I mean, it brings us back to the story of Elijah. The prophet Elijah. Sino po may kilala? Kay Elijah. Kilala nyo? Pakilala nyo naman ako. Hindi ko nakilala yun. <laughs> Hindi po, di ba? It starts in 1 Kings chapter 17 when Elijah comes up, his name. Di ba? He, he, he's there um, in the... on that day that the, the word of the Lord came back to him and he declared 
doon sa sa on that season that there will be no dew, there will be no rain. For three years, and that's and then he hid himself. The Lord allowed him to hide himself for three years. King Ahab was, was looking for him because of that declaration. And then finally, before the, the, the end, he shows up to Obadiah and tells Obadiah, Okay, you tell your king Ahab, I will face him. Sabi ni Obadiah, Bro, ang tagal kang hinanap niyan. Baka mamaya, sinabi ko, magkikita kayo, hindi ka nagpakita. Ah. Ako papatayin niyan. No, tell him, I'll show up. And he did show up. And when he showed up, and he challenged King Ahab to the last God standing competition. He challenged all the, the prophets of Baal, 450 to go without lighting a fire, offer that sacrifice to, to Baal. And the same way with him, he will fix his altar and offer his sacrifice to his living God. And we all know the story. Diba? We all know the story. After that, he kept on taunting the, the, the priests of Baal. Oh, sige na. Ano, natutulog ba? O baka nag-break? The whole afternoon, nothing happened. They were slicing their, their, you know, sprinkling their own blood and still no fire consumed their sacrifice. And when it was Elijah's turn, he just stood up. He prayed. He prayed to the Lord, let it be known today, O God, that there is a God in Israel, that that God is you. Consume. Consume this sacrifice. And all of a sudden, that fire from heaven came down, consumed. And then he killed all Baal's prophets. So we, we come to, to the part where we check on him on chapter 19 of 1 Kings. Chapter 19. You have your Bibles? If you have your Bibles, please open them to 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1. Allow us to start in verse 1. Are you there? Amen. Now, Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done. This is after the last God's standing challenge Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this morning, or if by this time tomorrow, I don't make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and he ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey. Sipi mo, sa sobrang takot niya, sa sobrang nervous ni Elijah. He, they came to the place of Beersheba. He even left his servants there and continued on another day's journey. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. Lord, patay mo na lang ako. Why should I live? <coughs> I have had enough, Lord. He said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. 
The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There, he went into a cave and spent the night. He replied, I have been very zealous. He came there into the cave, a lodge there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said, in verse 9, he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? What are you doing here, Elijah? God was asking him. Verse 10, and he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thine prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Verse 11, and he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount, the mount before the Lord, and, be how, and behold, the Lord passed by in a great strong wind, rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Verse 12, And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. Verse 13, And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? What are you doing here, Elijah? In front of me today, I see a lot of Elijahs. Man, woman of God, Strengthened by the Spirit. Consumed by the Word of God. But very unfortunate. Forgive me if I should say, these Elijahs that I see today, right here, right now, this very moment, most of them are in the cave. Hiding in fear. Confused. Filled with doubt in our minds. Gulong-gulo ko anong gagawin. What should I do for you, O oh God? Where do you want me to be? I see a lot of Elijahs. The potentials of Elijahs. The question that God raised to Elijah, what are you doing here, can be read in so many ways. But I want to read it in this way. First, what are you doing here? It is a question of our identity. Sino ka ba? Who are you? Do you believe that you are an Elijah? Do you believe that you can stand in the midst of people and declare God's goodness? It's a question of our identity. Who are you? What are you doing here? Of course, my question is not because Hindi ko tinatanong, ba't ka nandito sa church, di ba? Ang question dito is, what are you doing here? Right now? Do you remember who you are? Because if you do, then you'll be walking according to who you should be. 
But you see, because of trials, because of victories, you know, during that time in the men's convention, Pastor Raymond talked about even the success can be a tool for you not to obey God. Elijah just finished a successful last God standing challenge. Pinahiya niya lahat yung 450 priests ng Baal. It took them the whole afternoon and nothing happened sa kanilang sacrifice. Whereas kanya, he filled it he filled it with three drums of water, flowing with water. And all of a sudden, he prays, let it be known today that Israel has a God. And he listens to prayer and boom, the fire consumes that sacrifice, dries up the water that they placed. That success, that victory, it was with him. You see, after the victory, we are so consumed by the, the celebration, by the victory, and with what happened, the blessings, we forget about to look at God again. We forget about our God. Nanalo lang, naging victor silang tayo. We, t- we turn around from our God and we try to walk our way again and believe that God has anointed that path for you and me. Elijah forgot. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 36. It says, At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed. This was his prayer before he ran away and ran to that cave. This was his prayer when he asked the Lord to consume that sacrifice. Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel. And that I am your servant. He, he was declaring, let it be known that you are the God of Israel and that I, Elijah, is your servant. And I've done all these things according to your command. He forgot about that. He, he just lost that. He lost that prayer after the victory. And he was running away. Most of the time, we do that, di ba? Victory, victory, yes, oh, amen, praise God. And then one problem comes, we're in the cave hiding. We're in the cave, all alone, self-pitying. Lord, bakit ba? Why, why, bakit ako? Why this, Lord? What are you doing here? It's a question about your identity. Elijah forgot that he was a servant of God, the living God, the God who answers prayers. Is your God an answering prayer? You don't believe that. Boy, if somebody, kung meron pong ibang tao rito na hindi taga 8 o'clock, I ask you, do you believe your God is an answering prayer? He will not believe you and me that you believe that your God is answering prayers. You have no conviction at all, my dear brothers and sisters. I pray that God will answer your prayers. I pray that God will speak to you in your prayer time. And I pray that God will reveal to you during your prayer time so that when I ask you or the person preaching asks you, do you believe that God is an answering prayer? Konti na lang. Siguro mga 10 o'clock, sisigla na kayo. Para sabihin niya, dalawin mo, umalis ka na, gutom na kami. <laughs> he forgot that he was a servant of the living God, the God who was answering his prayer. He was the child of the Almighty, loving God.
2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack. Kapatid, if you're going through some attacks from the enemy, if, you're, if you think that God is not yet answering your prayer, or God is quiet, remember the Lord shall rescue you from every evil attack. And He will bring you what? Shout it out. He will bring you what? Safely where? To His heavenly kingdom. He knows you and me. He knows your weakness. He knows my weakness. And therefore, as we go and face this trial, this giant, He will make sure that we will, He will see us through to the other side towards His heavenly kingdom. That is who your God is. Don't forget who, the, who your God is. The question of God to Elijah, what are you doing here? Is reminding him, you are my servant. You are my child. The God who just burnt your sacrifice just because of your prayer and to let everyone know that I am the God of all. Do not forget that. Do not forget that. Do not forget that. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, what are you doing here? Do not forget that. Your God is reminding you today that you are a servant and a child of the living God. A God who answers prayers. A God who heals. A God who comforts. A God who protects. And a God who is a refuge in times of our trouble. That is who our God is. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Second, we can also read, what are you doing here? Pertaining to our actions. Simple lang, dito na lang sa loob ng simbahan. What are you doing here? Are you just here because it's Sunday? Ay, nako, sisimba tayo. Baka hindi tayo makita ni Brother Josed. Nako, patay tayo. What are you doing here? Ano ba ginagawa natin? Are we praising God because we are really here to praise our God, to worship our God? Or it's just 8 o'clock, you have to be here. Again, I, I don't want to judge you. I'm sorry if I offend you. But look, the question of what you are doing here pertains to our actions. It was pertaining to the action of Elijah. Verse 3 of chapter 19, it says, Elijah was so afraid and ran for his life. Let me read the New King James Version. And when he, that was Elijah, when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. Very similar action. I'll bring you back to the New Testament. When the Lord Jesus Christ, after ministering to the people, told his disciples, Go ahead! Go to the other side. Alis na tayo. Dali. Mauna na kayo. Go, go, go. And the, the disciples were just rowing and rowing and rowing. You know? And the evening came. Jesus was not there. And then at the fourth watch, which is what? Early in the morning? One, two, three, four o'clock in the morning. All of a sudden, they see this man walking in water. They were so afraid. Oh, may, may multo, may multo. May mumu. Diba? And then Jesus says, Hey, be of good cheer. It is I, the Lord Jesus Christ. What did Peter say to him? Lord, if it is you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, Come. And Peter goes down the boat and slowly walks on water. You remember that story? Matthew 14, verse 30. What did it say? But when he, Peter, saw the wind. You see the similarity? 
Elijah saw the threat of Jezebel against him. He ran for his life. Here you have Peter seeing the wind, the boisterous wind, the waves. He started sinking. What are you doing here? Are we like Elijah? After the victory that we have experienced with God, all of a sudden we stop because we see what? You know, we are so, we are like warriors when it comes to our Christian life, you know. We will take whatever God gives us. Let it be. Sige. Lord, give us what, alam ko naman, you will not give me what I can take. Diba? And then all of a sudden, the enemy sends a cockroach. Isang ipis. Diba? Sino po may alam ng ipis? Wala, hindi nyo alam yung ipis, cockroach. Diba? The enemy sends an, a, a cockroach. All of a sudden, you look at it. Oops. And then you walk. And then it starts walking, walking, walking. And when it flies, we all run away. Di po ba? Yung iba tumitili pa. Ah! It's just a cockroach. Pero we tell our God, No, Lord, give me. Kaya ko yan. Give me 450 priests of Baal. I will face them. And here comes the enemy sending a cockroach. Pagka lumipad, nauuna pa tayo sa asawa natin minsan. Nauuna pa tayo sa mga bata. Diba? Or sometimes we're just like Peter. Lord, I can take that. Give it to me, Lord. Yes, Lord. And when the Lord says, okay, eto na. And then, all of a sudden, we realize, oh my, this is not normal for one man to do. I, I am not in the realm of uh, natural habitat of mankind. And then we start to sink. We sink and we sink. And then we just ask ourselves, why am I here? What am I doing here? Lord, we cry out, Jesus, save me. What are you doing here in church? What are you doing here? What are you doing for the Lord? What am I, you and I, do for God? I, I just here to sit down, receive and receive and receive. There must be something because God has spoken to you and me. God has given you the word. God has given you a promise. God has given you a mission. It is not only the promise, not only the blessings, not only the favor, but God has given you and I a mission. My mission is different probably from your mission. But are we doing our mission here on earth? Are you walking according to God's plan for you and me? According to that mission? We have to accomplish that mission, church. Yes, we will face trials. We will see troubles. And we will have pains and tears in our eyes. Yes, but that's not the end of our Christian walk. That is only a part that will make you stronger and stronger and stronger so that when you get to that point, you know that God is there seeing you through. Kapatid, we have to do something. You have to do something about your mission. We just cannot be sitting down. L look, look around you, please. Look around you. Look around you. There are so many empty chairs in the balcony. Look at that. There are so many empty chairs. Souls that can fill those chairs. Remember what God said? You don't want to praise me? Then I let these stones praise me. Worship me. We have a mission. And one of that mission is that you and I go out 
and make disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is one common mission that you and I have. Let us not be like Elijah hiding in, the, in that cave. Having that self-pitying party. Oh, kuwawa naman ako. Ginagawa ko na lahat para sa simbahan. Ano pa ba kailangan kong gawin? Ano pa ba? Stop complaining. Stop that self-pity. Stand up. Arise. You have a mission to accomplish. You have a mission to do. Not for me, not for this church. But you have a mission to do for our God, our Savior, our Lord, Jesus Christ. What are you doing here? Philippians 4, 19 reminds us, and my God will what? Say it with conviction. My God. What? What? All your needs according to the riches. Our God will meet all your needs. Step out from that cave. Step out from where you are right now and declare that my God shall supply all my needs. God wants to supply your needs, but you're in the cave. You're in that room, locked up, fearful, fearing to get out of that room. What are you doing? What are we doing here? Number three. What are you doing here? A question of our location. A question of where you are right now. Are you still in the cave? Are you in a room? Are you in your closet? What are you doing here? God is asking you. God asks you and I, what are you doing here? God placed you where you are today because He knows that you will be effective in that place. Because He knows that you will be effective and you will be able to share His goodness, His good news, and His love. But what are you doing here? Again, I will remind you, as I see a lot of Elijahs in this room today, unfortunately, as I said, we are all in the cave, hiding. We're all in the cave, holding back, waiting for God to move first. Our God has been calling you and I to come out, but not like how we want it to be, not like, parang sa probinsya, oi! No. Remember, even like in verse 11 of chapter 19, right? And he said, Go forth, stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. And a great wind, a great strong wind came and rent with the mountains and break in pieces the rocks. But the Lord was not in the wind. An earthquake came. Still, God was not in that earthquake. Our God has been calling you and I out. Come out of the cave. Come out. Stand. Arise. Go forth. Arise. We have to move. We have to move forward. We have to step. We have to make that first step and tell the Lord, Lord, I am ready. 
willing, and able. But you see, you have to answer that call. You have to answer that still, small voice in your hearts that calls us, come out. Come out of that cave. Step up. Arise. Usually the voice of God is like a still small voice, a gentle whisper in the ear. Now sometimes we are having a hard time to understand what God is saying. Because sanay kayo, ganito. Di ba? Malakas ang boses, matas ang boses. But you see, when God speaks to you and me, asking us, what are you doing here? He talks to us in a very gentle, whispering voice. Stand up. Arise. Go out of that cave. And it's a question of where we are today. What are you doing where God placed you? Are you doing the purpose why God placed you there? What are you doing here? This question of what you are doing here is also the way of God to point us back to the past. Again, reminding who the Lord God is. What is the covenant of our God? What is your mission? What is our core identity? It reminds you and me with this question, what are you doing here? It should bring us to the past, remind us of that past, telling us who God is, what God is, and how God is in our lives. Not only the, to the past, but it also points to the future. What are you doing here it points also to the future of you and me. First Kings chapter 19, verse 15, it says, And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on the way on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. It is pointing also Elijah towards the future. Go. Go. Go back. Why are you here? Why are you standing here? You must be there. Turn around and go back. God is not saying no. Don't. God is not saying to go back to your old evil ways. God is saying what are you standing here for? What are you just sitting down there for? To listen? You have to go up, stand up. God is saying, go. Go forth. Go. Go back. Go back to your first love. Go back to that love of Christ. When He's captured your heart, when He has pierced that, that, that heart, when He made it flesh again, and that you feel His presence, that all the time you just want to step by Him and walk by Him and just say, Lord, where do you want me? What do you want me? How do you want me? Nowadays, we just walk on and, Lord, thank you for today. Huh? Protect me. And we just leave him in the house. We leave him in the closet. We leave him in the car. Brothers and sisters, we have to go and return to our first love. We have to go back there. He reminds Elijah, go back to that wilderness. Reminding him about that wilderness where the wilderness, all the Israelites were gathered, lost for 40 years. And he was just providing meal for them, providing the sun the, the shade, the, the he wanted them to remember how much he loves him, how much I want you to be 
here beside me. It points towards the future. What are you doing here? What are you doing here in church? I was just here to sit down, to listen, to come, to be counted as one. There are a lot of work to be done in the church. God is saying, go back, return to that work I have commissioned you to do. Probably it has been time that we have just sat on our, on, on, on our chairs and just continue to open the Bible and read and read. I think it's about time that we stand up, arise and go forth. Go forth to the work that God has placed. You know, I always wondered, because when I talk to some of the elderly in my family, I tell them, you know, it's about time. You know, why don't you go and serve God in church? They just answer, what? I'm already 72 and 74. You mean... Uh, Iwan mo na sa mga bata. Yeah, ikaw, bata ka pa. Go and serve if you want. But you see, is there a retiring age to be a Christian? Is there a retiring age for you to stop the work of God in your life? To stop your mission? To accomplish that mission? Is there a retiring age? Because my God has not issued that memo ever since. My God has never given me that memorandum by 70. You are relaxed. You can go and do whatever you want. No, sir. No, ma'am. Because my God says, till the last breath, I will be with you and you will be with me. And I will see you through whatever you are going through. That is who our God is. There is no retiring age. There is no age limit. Wala pong pagdating ko na 50, ayoko na. Tama na mag-preach. Bala na sila, Kuya Aljon. Sila naman, sila naman yung bata. No, kapatid, wala po tayong retiring age. Every day we have to work. We have to work on what God has given you. We have to work on that mission every day. We have to work on because our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Look at the second part of verse 15. Look at the second part of verse 15. You have that there? The second part, verse 15, it says, And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, Hallelujah! When you get there, God was telling Elijah, Anoint Hazel king, over Aram. Our God is faithful. He was saying to, to Elijah, Look, what are you doing here in the cave? What are you doing here hiding? You have a work to do. Look, go and anoint this man. Because if you read, if you follow the, the succeeding verses, it will say, you have to anoint this person because this person will do this, this person will do that, this person... There is an ever-working commissioning ahead of you and me. But you see, the beauty of them all, God said, when you get there. He was in danger. Jezebel wanted to kill him. Jezebel was hunting this Elijah. But God said, when you get there. He did not say, Elijah, punta ka doon. Kung dumating ka doon, anoint mo siya, ha? Kung hindi ka matraffic, ha? Kung hindi ka patay ni Jezebel, punta ka doon, i-anoint mo siya. No! Our God was so specific. He said, when you get there. And that is why He was asking Him, what are you doing here? Because no matter what you stand here, umiyak, lumuhot ka ng Umiyak ka ng bato, umiyak ka ng dugo, kung ano man ang gawin mo dyan, maglulupas ka dyan. Walang mangyayari sa'yo because you are not supposed to be there. You have to be there anointing these people, doing the work I have commissioned you to do. 
we are all sometimes worried. What will happen, Lord? What will happen? What, what will happen is that will happen. God said, when you get there, God is saying, you are going to get there no matter what. You are going to get there because I will see that you are going to get there. Not you. I will be the one to set you there, bring you there, and make you do my mission. Yan ang ating Panginoon. So do not even try to contest what am I going to do? How am I, how am I going to be? What am I going to wear? That is nothing compared to what God has for you and me. But you see, we have to do that mission. We have to step out of the cave. We have to get out of that room, brothers and sisters. We have to stand and listen to our God and go forth. Take that city. Take that community. Take that office. Take that school. Take that family. And bring them to the Lord our God who is faithful and true to you and me. Are you blessed? Yes. Hallelujah. Our God is faithful. Faithful and true. No matter what we face today, our God will always be asking you, what are you doing here? What are you doing in a cave? What are you doing in a room? Why are you hiding? Why are you pulling back? Why are you holding back? Well, what's wrong? When you should be all out there declaring my goodness, my, my, my love for, for these people that I love so much. You see, our God doesn't want any one of us to perish. That's why He has given you that you and I, not only you, not only me, not only this church, He has given everyone that believes and accepts Him as the Lord and Savior the commission to go and make disciples because every creature, every man, woman, every child to our Lord, our God is so important. He doesn't want you to perish. But you see, the truth is, if we do not share our Lord Jesus Christ outside, if we do not do our mission, if we stay in the cave, we stay in the room, we just sit down there, brothers and sisters, a lot of people will perish, probably our relatives, our friends. And it's because of us? And it's just because we didn't want to share? Because we were in that cave? Because we were in that room, hiding, fearful, what's going to happen? Our God is faithful. He told Elijah, when you get there, because he knew Elijah was going to get there. And today, our God tells us, when you get there, because he knows for sure you will get there. For sure, he knows that whatever your mission is for him, whatever that covenant that he has made between you and him, he will make sure that you will get there. He will get there. Allow me to read 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart, Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Walang katumbas. There is nothing to compare what God has for us in store, in store for you and me, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Hallelujah. Far outweighs them all. Aren't you excited? You do the mission. You do the covenant between you and your God. You do what God has prepared for you to do for His kingdom. Whatever you have done, whatever you have suffered, whatever you have gained, Whatever you may have experienced during that journey will not compare far, far away compared to what the glory He has for you and me in His kingdom. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we fix our eyes. Let us fix our eyes on not what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, and but, but what is unseen is eternal. Kapatid, it's about time. <coughs> every week, we challenge everyone. Every week, we ask everyone. I ask you today and I challenge you today. Arise. Arise. Arise, you man of God, woman of God, child of the living God, child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Arise from where you are today. Arise and claim that victory right now because we are all going to step out of that cave Step up, step out of that room. And when the Lord asks us, what are you doing here? Then we shall answer him, lifting our hands to the King of kings and Lord of lords, giving glory to your name, worshiping you, O God, for you alone are worthy of all our praises. Let's all stand right now. We will sing. I challenge you to step out. Children of God, man, woman of God, step up. Arise from our slumber, from our sleep. Come, this is the time. Our God is asking us, what are you doing here? Let us answer that call. Answer that call. Let, let's all step out. Stay here in front and we will all pray. We will all pray. This is not only a call for you. It's a call to our workers, to our elders, to our children. It is a call to everyone.